In update 2.1, Gaijin did something to naval damage models. Or rather, lots of somethings. We went from the relatively good 1.101 damage models to some very confusing busted ones. It's not as simple as just one or two changes that have made this mess, and it's likely more than anyone can cover in full detail within a single video of this length, but I'll do my best to explain what's wrong with the damage models, and how to fix them. The first part I'll be covering is an increase to ammo detonation chances. It's the most apparently broken part, and from both a historic and gameplay sense, it doesn't really work. The information used here is from HK Reporter's forum post, Ammo Explosions at High Tier Naval Battles, What on Earth is Going Wrong in This Game, which I'll link in the description, as it goes into much more detail than I can here. Currently, all parts of the ammunition damage model act similarly. Shell rooms, magazines, secondary ammunition, and ready racks are all very easy to detonate by hitting them with direct fire. The shell room in particular is an instant kill, while other forms of storage deal significant damage and light major fires. However, in real life, this simply isn't the case. Naval shells, from 5 inch and 127mm and up, are generally separated ammunition, a projectile and a propellant stored separately. This has a few implications. First off, shell rooms should never detonate from direct fire. These rooms only contain the projectile, which use inert fillers and have thick shell walls. In fact, shell rooms are used similarly to how fuel tanks are in ground vehicles. They provide protection from enemy fire, rather than being a weak point. In Norman Friedman's book, British Cruisers, Two World Wars and After, it's stated that the shell rooms are placed above the magazines to save length and to provide additional protection. In real life, the real threat to shell rooms is a prolonged fire, as that could cause the shells to heat up and detonate. As for the magazines, those are actually vulnerable to enemy fire. Many British ships at the Battle of Jetland suffered detonations within their magazines that instantly destroyed the ships, and HMS Hood suffered the same fate later during World War II. In War Thunder, the shell rooms and magazines have their roles reversed, with the shell rooms being an instant death when they're hit, and magazines having much more minor effects. The other issue covered in this forum post is about shells not fusing when they hit the water. It's not really a damage model issue, but do keep in mind that this does make it easier to hit the vulnerable powder rooms than it would be in real life. I won't go into much detail on this one, just know that it makes shells hit below the belt in places they couldn't have in real life. Overall, the projectile components of shells should only detonate from prolonged fire damage, and never from direct damage. Powder magazines may explode, but they shouldn't be getting hit how they are at the moment. From a historic perspective, this would make a lot more sense. From a gameplay perspective, it would shift the damage models back towards update 1.101, where overall damage output and damage control mattered a lot more than a single good hit with lucky RNG for an instant kill. That covers the ammunition issue. The new problems here in update 2.1 are crew redistribution, some other damage model changes that came with it, and a few older issues that still haven't been fixed. The changes to crew layout have generally redistributed them outside of the protected areas of ships. While this has generally made destroyers marginally weaker, cruisers have really suffered from this change. Now, their armor protection doesn't really shield the crew from high explosive damage like it should. This hasn't had major effects on dreadnoughts, as they have full coverage of armor across their hull, rather than the later all-or-nothing armor schemes. Overall, this means that ships with more advanced armor schemes are now worse. This is similar to the issue with internal torpedo bulges not being modeled, making later and more advanced designs distinctly weaker than ones with external bulges that were added later. The issue here would be that the game's damage mechanics are favoring vehicles that are, historically, worse designs. Ships with internal torpedo belts or better designed armor layouts are inherently worse than older ships that lack these advancements, which is just an odd decision on Gaijin's end. It would be pretty easy to compensate for, simply by modeling internal torpedo bulges and redistributing the crews of ships to where they would be under combat conditions. If these differences would make the ships with later designs significantly better, they can simply be moved up in battle rating to account for that. Now, onto some of the issues of inconsistent modeling between ships. If anyone remembers when USS Cleveland and IJ Antone were added, they actually lacked the same number of internal bulkheads as other cruisers, making them incredibly weak to internal fragmentation. This issue still holds up between more ships, and while it's less pronounced than that example, it still does make some ships more or less tanky than they really should be. Internal bulkheads make up a huge part of a ship's protection, and being less thorough in modeling the bulkheads of some ships than others means that any vessel that's given more attention when it receives its damage model gets a massive buff to its protection over other ships. Another issue would be that some forms of armor don't produce any fragmentation when penetrated, specifically rolled cemented armor. 
This is a primary armor component on many dreadnoughts, so it producing no fragmentation provides a massive buff to survivability, where it obviously shouldn't be doing that. It also boosts the effectiveness of many cruisers, while ships that use other armor types don't get that bonus. There's also another armor type with distinct issues, STS or anti-fragmentation armor. This is notably only present on American ships and a few Russian coastal ships at the moment. More countries should have it in some form, as everyone in World War II had some form of fragmentation protection on their destroyers. Lacking this gives American destroyers a significant and unfair advantage over all of the other countries. Paired with how America already has the highest damage output on their destroyers, it really compounds into making them directly stronger than all of their competition in the 4.3 to 5.0 range. If everyone else had their anti-fragmentation armor, that would bring them a bit more into line. America would likely have the strongest destroyers still, but it would make them a bit more balanced. There are also some American ships that don't have it but should, such as the USS Cleveland, which has an incredibly similar hull design to the USS Brooklyn, which does have it in-game. Dreadnought crew compartments were also modeled differently from that of destroyers and cruisers, being on a per-deck and per-bulkhead basis. Cruisers and destroyers have giant crew compartment hitboxes between multiple decks and over massive sections of the ship that make them much more susceptible to damage. The way the Dreadnoughts are modeled is a lot more in-depth, giving them major boosts to survivability since it's harder to damage more of the crew at once. The overall problem here is consistency. All ships should be modeled in similar and realistic ways so that some don't have unfair advantages over the others. Each ship's bulkheads should reflect the actual density of their internal protection, all armor should react similarly to penetrations, anti-fragmentation armor should be modeled on every ship that had it, and crew compartment modeling should be done in the same way for every vessel. Each little inconsistency adds up, and the more each ship differs from each other, the more they get unpredictable. A ship might be missing its armor or modeled with a low number of crew compartments, or it might have an in-depth damage model that makes it tankier than better protected ships. For a bit of context, this video was meant to come out during the update 1.99 damage model fiasco. However, college got in the way of that, and by the time I could make the video, they'd been partially fixed in update 1.101. Since update 2.1 absolutely destroyed the damage model consistency, it seemed like the perfect time to revive this old idea. I would specifically like to thank HK Reporter for the help in making this, since I personally don't have a full technical understanding of the damage models. Hopefully Gaijin can listen to more of the forum posts discussing the current broken damage models and do something about them, since currently, they just seem unfinished and inconsistent. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more enabled content.